Good evening, wine, press, friends and family. It's got a rowdy crowd here in the house tonight. That's okay. That's all right. Uh, for those of you watching online, go ahead and settle in. We got, uh, I feel like the Lord's got a very encouraging word for us this week that we, uh, he started talking to me about this several days ago, and we've been preaching on the, on the couch. We've been preaching to each other on the couch for several days now, so we just, uh, this evening kind of finalized all the general areas that we were going in and narrowed it down to uh, uh, don't throw away your confidence. And I feel like this day and age that the world and these challenges that we expe uh, experience every day are trying to take the Lord's confidence that's within us away. So we got to guard against that uh, with all of our hearts. And, and he is uh, faithful to replenish us when our cap our confidence gets low if we turn to him he has everything that we need and I apologize last week I skipped a whole page of notes I was just zip <laughs> zipping right through there get, I, maybe I was getting the signals out here that everybody wanted to go home I don't know uh, but I just I blew right through a, a page of notes and uh, maybe it wasn't for last week maybe it was for more this week so I'm gonna go right through that really quick and then go right into the, uh, the message I think the Lord has for this week. And uh, we are thankful and grateful today for uh, everything that the Lord's doing in our lives. We've had two weeks of good, encouraging words on Sunday mornings. That was a timely word. And we're looking forward to this Sunday with Pastor Polly being back with us and see uh, what the Lord has to say this Sunday. So it's an excitement. It's already building. And I know has, the Lord has a word for us. Uh, to go and we just don't want to be hearers of the word we want to take what we've heard and do that what what it's saying and uh, so the Lord will give us confidence to do that as well so tell me father we pray tonight that your spirit would come upon this house here and in the house here and in your living room or wherever you are that the spirit of the Lord would come in and rest upon us and teach us Lord we are so thankful and grateful for all that you are learned that we're learning through these experiences and challenges that have come our way, that we are, can come out with a better understanding of your revelation of your word that can be applied to our lives and change us and change us. That it doesn't have to be a change for the bad. It can be a change for uh, more wisdom, more discernment, more everything that we need to, to, to bring on any circumstance in our lives that we can overcome. And you have put that within us and it is attainable is achievable and lord we uh we grasp a hold of that and we hold on to that so lot, tonight lord i want you to just bless this word for somebody in the house that is listening lord i believe it was for my family first off but i believe it's for somebody else too in jesus name we pray amen so last week we uh we shared a little bit about um comfort zone and i had shared with you i seen a graph about um it's, it, the comfort zone is here, you move into the fear zone, and then you go into the learning zone, and then after you learn, you go into the growth zone. You've already passed all those levels, and you're growing in a particular area of your life. So um, this particular page that I missed uh, is on the learning zone. Um, and the quicker we can get out of the fear zone uh, and, and, and not succumb to fear and see what the Lord is trying to teach us through this circumstance or challenge event in our life, that we can get to the learning zone, get it learned, and then start growing in that area as well. So Sister Joyce talked about it um, uh, two Sundays ago. And uh, so she said we can activate growth with the power of the Holy Spirit and with the power and authority he has made available to us. We have the access to him, and he has everything that we need. In Proverbs 12, 1, learn the truth. To learn the truth, you must long to be teachable, or you can despise correction and remain ignorant. In the New King James Version, it says, same scripture, whosoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates it, that hates correction, is stupid. I never knew that word stupid was in the New King James Version, but I think that's funny. But that's what we want to do. We want to be longing for being having a teachable heart longing to grow, longing to learn, longing to uh, battle, and not, not battle fear, but overcome fear, yeah. longing for that. 
So, um, and, and along with Sister Joyce's message too, she said, when we stay in the playpen, we're safe from trouble. And she talked about her visual that she had about her being in the playpen, and the Lord was ready to take her out of the playpen. But she was comfortable in her Christianity and the things that she learned. She was comfortable there in the playpen. So she had a vision of herself with the rattle and the bonnet on and the whole thing. I thought it was so funny. I just can picture that. And can't we all picture ourselves in that playpen at times that in these areas in our lives we're, we're not growing in? We're still in the, in the infant stage, and, and we haven't moved from the milk to the meat yet. And I, I just, this uh, illustration that she had was uh, so powerful, and I remember it says, so, um, but your learning is limited when you're in the playpen. When your mother and, or father takes you out of the playpen, we have a new world and many opportunities to learn and to be corrected. When they take us out of that safe environment, when the Lord takes us out of this environment that we consider safe, we're not stretching, we're not learning, but we're just comforting, we're just in that little zone there. But when he takes us out and puts us out and pushes us into a, um, a difficult circumstance or a challenged circumstance, we have an opportunity there to, to learn, grow, or make a mistake. We have an opportunity there. So that's what she was, I believe that's what she was trying to say, that when he takes us out of this comfort zone, that uh, we have to learn that what we were doing in the comfort zone is not going to apply in the, the new world that we have just encountered. Um, the, the, the things we say to our kids all the time, this is hot, this is breakable, this is poisonous, don't eat that, get that out of your mouth. All these things, as when we're young and been out of our comfort zone, we have to be careful. We have to guard ourselves against this new world that's been opened up to us and know that there are things out there that's out to snare us and trap us that wasn't in the comfort zone. So as soon as we can get out of the comfort zone, get through the fear zone, get to the learning zone, Get to the growth zone. So in Proverbs 18, 15, the, spirit, the spirituality hungry, hunger will always be ready to learn more, for their hearts are eager to discover new truths, ready to uh, mature and wean from milk to the meat of the word. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, God has transmit, transmitted his very substance into every scripture. For it is God-breathed. It will empower you by its instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. Then you will be God's servant, fully mature, not on milk anymore, on the meat. You, then you will be fully mature and perfectly prepared to fulfill any assignment that God gives you. we got to get out of the playpen. We got to get out, stop playing around, get on the meat that He has for us. He has it for us. It's available to us. And my dad always told me this when we were working a lot, and he was training me and showing me. He's like, the people that don't make mistakes aren't doing anything. So don't be afraid of it. Do what the Lord is telling you to do. Do what I've taught you. Let me let me clean up the mess. If it, it's a mess, you you act in obedience. Don't worry about this other stuff. So we got to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, Miranda. You with me? You're with me. When we activate, remember activate? Yeah. Sister Joyce, activate. When we activate, we'll be ready to fulfill any assignment, any assignment, not just several assignments, not just some assignments. It says any assignments that the Lord gives us because he's not going to do it. He's not going to throw us out there unprepared. So right now, Miranda, Tabitha, Caleb, all these young ones, he's preparing us for something because we're going somewhere. Yeah. And he wants us to be fully prepared when we get there. Yeah. We're going somewhere. I had a dream uh, a couple nights ago about going somewhere. Uh, it just, it was so vibrant in the colors and different things. We, I was, uh, me and my wife were in line to get on a train or a tram. Uh, it looked like a train, but it, it was open kind of like a Disneyland train. It was just open, and it was bright red. It had gold trim, and it was just this, we're going somewhere. So we got in line. There's a lot of people in line. We're standing in line. And just when the train come up, just before we was to get on, we were going to muscle our way through the crowd and get on to make sure we got on. 
there was a, a, a lady standing right here beside us, a shorter lady with brown hair, glasses, and she had a flag. And she's like, no, you're coming with me. And I'm like, okay. So we followed the little flag. You could barely see because she was short, kind of like a Lena size. Yeah. I don't want to make fun of her, but she's short. She has brown hair and glasses. I just need to get her a flag, I guess. But uh, she escorted us to the front of the train. She escorted us, not the crowd. We separated ourselves, went to the front of the train, and it was a seat for uh, just uh, several people. And we were seated. There was the, the engine and this seat. And she seated us there, and she got in with us and sat down with her flag. So as I was sitting there, and we're looking forward, that there was this uh, uh, a, a town or village in front of us with cobble streets, kind of like old country uh, Ireland, uh, Sister uh, Pastor Polly has been there. Ireland, it's, everything's old there, four or five, six hundred years old. Uh, it wasn't like a town from the United States. It was, uh, I'd say, overseas, hundreds of years old town uh, by the look. And uh, that was like the scene that I seen that was, uh, we were getting ready to leave and go toward. And that was the, the kind of the end of the dream. So I've just been pondering on that, um, on that, what that means and what the Lord's trying to show me through that. But I think most of all is we're going somewhere. Yeah. We're going somewhere, Miranda. You're not going where I'm going. You're not, you're not going to go the same journey. You're going to go this way, and I'm going to go that way, and Sister Becky's going to go a different way. But we're all going to end up in the same destination. Right. The same destination. So what we need to learn and get prepared for will be different from you than what I need to learn. And that's okay. We're going to end up in the same destination. So don't throw away your confidence in Hebrews 10, 35 and 36. Don't throw away your confidence because it has a great reward. For you need endurance in order to do God's will to receive what he has promised. And Pastor Polly has, has uh, preached this about endurance, uh, the will, the uh, fullness. And, um, and this is what we don't want to do is when we throw away our confidence, we are excluding ourselves from that. Now, not in our own ability. Our, our own confidence is limited. But when we apply his confidence to us and put it inside of us, it is absolutely unlimited to, to receive what he has promised us, to receive it. And every word will come to pass. Every spoken word over our lives, Miranda, picking on you a little bit, every spoken word over you, Every promise, every word that you have read, believe it. It's going to come to pass. So get ready. Tabitha, every spoken word over your life. Caleb, every spoken word. We've come too far and heard too many things and experienced too many miracles, too many challenges, too many prayer requests, too many answered prayers, too many to believe otherwise. Every word will come to pass. Every word. I'm excited about that because i got some promises out there, and I'm ready. If I'm not ready, I'm continually going to get myself ready and put myself in position to be able to receive what he wants for us. And it is unlimited. It will so far past our any imagination, any movie that we might have seen or any illustration that we might have seen. It's going to be so far beyond that. It's going to blow our minds. I'm ready for, to have my mind blown. I'm ready. I'm ready. So in the Passion Translation in Hebrews, the same scripture, Hebrews 10.35, so don't lose, don't lose your bold, courageous faith, for you are destined for a great reward. You need the strength and endurance to reveal the poetry of God's will, and then you will receive the promise in full. And let's read on down into uh, the Passion Translation in Hebrews 10.38 and 39. And he also says, my righteous ones will live from, from my faith. But if fear holds them back, my soul is not content with them. But we are certainly not those who hold back by fear and perish. We are among those who have the faith and experience true life. That's us. We are not those in fear. We are the ones that... In our faith, we can experience true life because we're going somewhere. And I believe that 
uh, as soon as we can get the concept of believing before we see, it's done. It's over after that. It's only crazy faith until it happens. As soon as it happens, and it's not so crazy anymore. I got some crazy stuff out there that I'm believing for, and uh, it's only crazy until it happens, and I believe it's going to happen. I believe it's going to happen soon. Soon and very soon. There's a song about that. So in Psalm 27, 13, I'm giving you a lot of scripture tonight. It's more of him and less of me. Psalms 27, 13, and 14, it's in the New English translation. Where would I be if I didn't believe? Where would I believe if I didn't believe I would experience the Lord's favor in the land of the living? Where would we, where would we be if we didn't have the faith? Where would we be? In verse 14, it says, rely on the Lord. Be strong and confident. Rely on the Lord. So it starts with rely on the Lord. Be strong and confident. And then it ends with rely on the Lord. In verse uh, 14 in the Passion Translation, here's what I've learned through it all. Don't give up, but be, and don't be impatient, but be entwined as if, as one with the Lord. Be brave, con- t- c- courageous, don't lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting, for he will never disappoint you. Ever, never disappoint. I'm going to do my best not to s- skip a page. So if it gets to sound a little weird, just give me a, give me a, a hands up or whatever. So I feel like that the Lord is continuing to build our confidence in situations and challenges in our life. He's, he's always going to be um, pushing us a little bit further and giving us a little more confidence in him by the experiences, by answered prayers and miracles and these things. It just, it's a building, building, building block. Uh, my dad uh, trained me and my brother uh, at a very early age. We didn't spend summers at home with mom. We spent summers on the job site with my dad, and he was teaching us and learning. Uh, we were learning how to work. Uh, I think most of the time we were in his way and we were pain in the butt, but he was still teaching us uh, the, the, mo- the, uh, the method and what, as men, are we are to do to pr- learn how to provide for our families. He was teaching us in a whole lot of um, actions and not so many words. So in this uh, learning process, and as I became a teenager, I was probably about 14 years old. Um, we rolled up on a house and was going to paint this house. And uh, my dad says, you're painting this house. He's like, you've been watching me long enough. You know what to do and you know how to do it. And I was uh, a little bit shaken by that. But he had confidence in me that I was already watching and he was training and he was, I was asking all the questions and all these things. His confidence was in me. Now, I didn't have the confidence. The father had the confidence in me. And he's like, there it is. Here's the paint. This is the colors. This is, it's, you're doing this. And I did it. Now, there was a, a few rough edges here and there, but that was the correction that the father was, my father was giving me along the way that I needed the hands-on stuff. I needed the fundamentals. I had the fundamentals, but I needed the hands-on to be able to do it, make every step count, and there's going to be some rough edges. That's okay. We can fix that. So he was teaching me, and I, I'm so thankful for my dad that uh, he instilled within me and my brother these, these, uh, these fundamentals that it wasn't just about painting. It was about life. And I miss my dad every day. I wish he was here. Uh, he was just a... Um, a he had a sixth grade education, and I figured he was the smartest man on the planet. Uh, I never seen that sixth grade education affect him in any way. Never. I, all I seen was wisdom and discernment. He knew how to pray, uh, and he taught us that. Um, I don't know why I got off on this, but I, I was probably about five years old. We were going back, we went back and forth between Florida and California about a hundred times when I was a kid. Not a hundred times, but many times. And we would usually drive straight through because we didn't have money for hotels. We'd either park on the side of the road, and there's five of us in the car, plus mom and dad. It's pretty crowded. We'd park on the side of the road, sleep a few hours, and keep on going. Well, one morning I woke up, and the hood of the car was open, and it was barely daylight. And I could see over the back seat and between the the hood of the car and the dash, there was a little three-inch little window there I could peek through. And dad had the... Uh, part of the carburetor off of the car 
and like something was wrong. And so I was looking through there, and he was messing around with the carburetor. There was gas everywhere. It was just like a fountain of gas coming out of the carburetor. If you know anything about cars, that is not a good sign. There's minimal, should be minimal gas in the carburetor, not a fountain shooting out of it. So he was trying to get that cleaned back up, and I'd seen him kind of working around it, and then I've seen him stop. i seen him stop. And he took his hands, and he cupped the carburetor, and he started praying. Just seconds, just, it just, and I was like, okay, I need to pay attention here. He put the parts back on the carburetor, put the little thing on the breather on the top, got back in, the car started, and we drove away. It's teaching us something here that you need to stop and pray. What, how many times do we stop and pray last instead of first? I just remember these moments that my dad was teaching me things. He never said a word. I never said a word to him. Never, never, never said anything about that. But he's teaching me something. He wasn't, te- he wasn't doing that to show me. But I was watching, always watching the Father. Man, there's a lesson there. Do and say and react, react, underreact, overreact. Whatever the Father would do, that's what we need to be doing. That's what we need to be doing. And seek him first. Seek him first. So his word says we can trust and hope in him and not be disappointed. And uh, we watched this little movie, and it says that um, the happy ending, it's on its way. So we can be disappointed, disappointed right now and, and hold on. It's not over. There's going to be a happy ending. Yeah. We can't see it right now. It's okay, it's okay if you're not seeing it. But we're going to believe before we see that there's going to be a happy ending to our situation or somebody else's healing or whatever it is, we can, we can believe before we see. We, and we can strengthen that area. I was reminded of the story of uh, uh, the David and Goliath in uh, 1 Samuel 17, uh, 36 and 37 about um, the Lord was preparing David for a lot of things to come at a very early age. A lot of things to come at a very early age. He was building David's confidence when he was a shepherd boy. He was building his confidence in killing the lion and the bear. It seems a little scary to me um, with his bare hands. Not just one time, but twice. He's building his confidence. It's like, okay, I did the lion. You know, he's feeling pretty good, this scrawny little kid out there. Uh, the bear took it. I'm going to go pry this th- lamb out of his mouth. So he's building his confidence. So in verse 36, uh, 17, verse 36 and 37, your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. In verse 37, moreover, David said, the Lord, who delivered me, who delivered from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And um, could he have done this without killing the lion and the bear and then going in? I feel like the Lord was preparing him. This is what we're doing. This is what we're talking about. He's preparing us for things to come. He's not just going to throw us out unprepared. He's going to build these little stumbling blocks, not stumbling blocks, building blocks with a lion or a bear. So when we meet the giant, it won't be no big deal because our confidence of the Lord is already in us. We've come too far. We've already experienced too much. The confidence of the Lord is in us because it looked like a big deal, but the confidence he had to that Saul had been put into David previously gave him the faith to go on. In verse 38, So Saul clothed David with armor, and he put the bronze helmet on his head, and he clothed him with a coat of mail. And I just looked at that, and it it looked like Saul was trying to put the world on him, the world's way of protecting yourself, the world's way of fighting the world's way of reacting, the world's way of uh, um, taking care of business. And David's like, let's read it. It says, David fastened the sword 
uh, to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I can't walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. He freed himself from that stuff because he already experienced the power of the Lord on him. He already, he already, he already experienced too much to know it's like, I can do this just the way I am. So in verse 40, then he took, took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag in a pouch where he had and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. And I just thought that was always interesting that he picked up five but he only needed one. So maybe his confidence wasn't all the way there yet so he's just going to pick up a few extra just in case. Maybe it wasn't all the way there because got, David's got a lot more learning and a lot more confidence to build before he gets to his destination. So this is another stepping stone, I feel like, for him and building his confidence. So he just went ahead and picked up five in his own, on his own ability. That's just my little take on that. Of course, he only needed one because the Lord was directing it. In verse 41, so the Philistine came and began drawing near to David, and the man who bore the shield went before him. Verse 42. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, I bet that was just quite a sight. I think that would be kind of funny. You've got to look at both perspectives here. He's like, this is, this is a joke. I'm not even going to honor this by a fight. You know, he's, bring me a man, you know. So he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good-looking. I could kind of picture David as being a little bit scrappy, a little wiry, uh, but full of fight, full of fight, full of the Lord, which is really all he really needed. I'm on page three now, guys. I'm, I'm tracking. <laughs> so David's confident, confidence wasn't in his skill. It was in the Lord. It wasn't his skill that he could throw a sling and hit anything. It wasn't a skill that he could rip a, a lion jaw off a lamb. That wasn't, his confidence wasn't there. His confidence was in the Lord. And that's where our confidence needs to be, not on our own ability. Uh, degrees on the wall and all these things, that's great, but that's not where our confidence is. Our confidence is in the Lord that we can do all things, not some things, Miranda. Philippians 4.13, you know, the pillows on the couch that have the the verse on it that says we can do some things we can do uh, a few things more than other people no it says all things but what will happen before we can do all things that he'll prepare us to be able to do all things if we're learning we're having the teachable heart and we're applying ourselves to any situation they're like okay lord what are you trying to teach me here what is it there's something here i keep coming back to this area it seems to be sensitive or whatever that is. There's something here that I need to learn so I can move on to the growth zone. I want to get out of this fear and, you know, I'm, I'm ready to move on. And the Lord's so patient with this. He's so patient with this. And, man, I, I'm glad that he is because uh, I feel like sometimes that I wear him out. <laughs> I wear him out. It's like, he's doing it again. You just did that. Okay, we're, we're going to do it again. And he's so gracious. To, to show us again like any kind father would. It's like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do it again. It's okay. So in verse 43, So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you would come with me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. In verse 44, And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beast of the field. And then David said, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin. But he's coming toward him with the world and everything that the world's weapons has to throw at him. Go ahead. Just like Sister Becky said, uh, I think it was Sunday night, that we can just, is this the weapons world, uh, stuff of the world? We can brush that off. That don't affect me. That's what David's saying here. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of the host, the God of the armies of Israel, whom have defiled. Verse 46. This day, 
the Lord will deliver you into my hand. I will strike you. He's speaking in faith here. He hasn't done all this yet. He's putting it into action. He's seeing. He's believing before he's seeing right here. He's already got it. I already got a place marked out on his forehead. But I'm going to go ahead and say this. I will strike you and take your head from you. This day I will give your carcass to the camp of the Philistines, to the birds of the air and the wild. He turned it right back around on him. The weapons that he thought he was going to use and the, the, the uh, threats, he turned it right back under the Lord's power. And it says that all earth may know that there is a God in Israel. He declared his confidence that the Lord, the, he declared his confidence in the Lord and remind, and we need to remind ourselves again, obedience and trust is all the confidence we'll need. Obedience and trust that he is all the confidence that we need. And we have, we have total access to that. David had already experienced some traumas. And uh, I said before, I'd, I'd call uh, fighting a bear and a lion pretty traumatic to me. Uh, bold, scary, exciting. I think um, Pastor Polly has mentioned this a couple times. It is bold, scary, and exciting. But if you're in the will of the Lord and you're doing what he's telling you to do, then let it be bold, scary, and exciting. Let it be. Let it be. I used to work with an older gentleman, and he'd always say, you know what the best thing to do is when it's pouring down rain? You know what the best thing to do is? I was like, I don't know. He's like, let it. <laughs> let it. Let it rain. Let it rain. And these are the things that we're learning here. But these experiences created confidence in the Lord and faith muscles. And Pastor Polly has talked about uh, growing in the faith muscles, the trust muscles, all these things that we need to grow in. And be, to be able to grow in those areas, they need to ex be exercised and tension and adding a little more weight, a little more challenge, a little more whatever that is. It's gonna, that increases the muscle and the, and the endurance. And he's always building and preparing, always, always building an uh, area in our life that needs to be strengthened is always preparing us for what's fixing to come toward us. And uh, I got several familiar scriptures that probably everybody's got them on their pillows on the couch, and it's okay. These are reminders. This is nothing new. But sometimes we need the reminder that the Lord uh, is everything that we need. Philippians 4.13. You guys know this. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. And then, of course, 1 Peter 2, 6, Those who trust in the Lord will not be disappointed. Romans 5, 5, Now hope does not disappoint. His hope does not disappoint. And, of course, the scripture that we talked we started with in Hebrews 5.35, our opening verse. So don't throw away your confidence because it has great reward. We are being prepared for something incredible. So be grateful and then be ready. Miranda, Tabitha, Caleb, I wish the house was full of young people. Get ready. Get ready. He has something incredible for you. Be grateful for it and the challenge. That comes your way because you're not being challenged you're not growing so bring on the challenges because i want to grow i want to stay out of the playpen yeah. i've experienced too much on the other side to know that there's some good things out here that i need to learn and be good at because it's not just for us it's for somebody else it's for somebody else but it started this week with the harrison family on the couch um started with us first and i tell uh, my wife this all the time. I was like, I, I don't know if I need to share this. I think it's just for us today or whatever. And I was like, no, it's not. It's for it's us as the Wine Press Church and our community here in Santa Maria or wherever we might go, wherever we might go, because we're going somewhere. So let's get ready to go. Let's get ready to go. I had this one uh, one joke here, and I'll, it, I probably will discard everything I said from here on out. So a man walks, in, walks into a tailor shop to buy a tuxedo. He confidently, tell, he confidently, confidently tells the tailor he doesn't need any assistance. So the tailor says, fine, suit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> I don't know. I thought that was funny because it. Um, okay, so what did the confident rodent say to the hesitant rodent? Just go for it. <laughs> Listen, the Lord is good and perfect in all of his ways. In spite of us sometimes that we get in his way, but if we can stay humble enough to go back and ask for repentance of the things that we should have done, could have done, could have done better, our, our delayed obedience and all that stuff, if we are quick to go back and repent from those things, he is quick to come back and put us where we need to go. So we are being prepared for something incredible. So be grateful and be ready. In Jesus' name, we'll see you Sunday.